definitely my favorite dark academia series fast paced read a female serial killer you're gonna want to read this hi cuties i am so very excited to be bringing this video to y'all voted on by my patrons which is autumnal thriller recommendations as of right now it is absolutely raining leaves in minnesota which means all that i want to do is curl up with autumnal books so i figured i would come on here and give a recommendations video of autumnal thriller and horror books that you can do the same with so this video is going to be structured by different types of thrillers we have investigations we have paranormal thrillers we have gothic thrillers as well as suspense thrillers there is going to be something for absolutely everyone, whether you like light scary or intense fear. Feel free to check out the chapters down below if you'd like to skip to any specific portions of the video, but I guarantee every single one of these books you will want to add right to your TBR. Let us get started with our gothic thriller recommendations. Gothic horror is probably my favorite genre within the realm of spooky, and that's because of the atmosphere and the type of writing. This genre is normally categorized by intense feelings of dread and creeping suspense and anxiety which is absolutely what I want from my thriller and horror books it often takes place in old castles old houses England is a really popular place and setting for gothic books and those are all things that I really enjoy so I've got three books here and the first one I'm going to start with is House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson Alexis Henderson made quite the impression on the book community when she came out with year of the witching and I absolutely absolutely loved that book but did not enjoy the ending. Now House of Hunger is another gothic suspense novel from her, her sophomore, and it is about this young woman who is trying to improve her station in life. She currently lives in the slums with her brother when she receives the opportunity of a lifetime. Abandon all she knows and become a blood maid. A blood maid is a highly coveted position in society. Essentially, you are taken into a wealthy, prestigious household and routine bled for your blood's healing properties. She ends up accepting this proposal and gets indoctrinated into this glamorous but dark lifestyle as well as a house full of riches but deep dark secrets. Now my caveat to this book is that I am only halfway through so this is a tentative recommendation but I wholeheartedly recommend it for autumnal thriller vibes. If you are like me and you really enjoy books involving blood as well as complex relationships between girls you're going to want to read this. Coming in with another gothic horror that involves relationships between girls we have Sisters by Daisy Johnson. Daisy Johnson is a phenomenal author who has a beautiful way with words and in sisters we are following two sisters that are thick as thieves their identities are wrapped up in each other and they end up leaving their town and going to their mysterious childhood home because of something tragic that happened that the reader doesn't know about so you're trying to figure out what exactly these girls and their mother are fleeing from while also delving into this deeply toxic and destructive sibling relationship. It's an amazing book about codependency, dynamics that are difficult to escape, as well as the secrets that run within families. This is going to be a fantastic book for those of you who like to be haunted by words on the page. It is fantastically creepy, but also literary as well. So if you are someone that really enjoys good ass writing, you're going to love Sisters. Sibling relationships is something in books that I very, very much enjoy, especially sister relationships. I do not have any sisters, but I've always been so fascinated by that type of relationship that type of bond. And this haunting kaleidoscopic story is sure to leave you guessing and spooked. And the final gothic recommendation I have for y'all is Tripping Arcadia by Kit May Quist. This is a gothic novel from a trans masculine author and I have to say I have not read it yet but I've got good 
feelings. And I know that this is going to be a perfect autumnal thriller because just simply look at the cover. So again, if you enjoy creepy houses with lots of secrets and decadence and rich people problems just like I do in your thrillers, then this is going to be a book that you'll want to pick up. I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about this book and I'm going to try my damnedest to squeeze it into my reads before the end of the year. I'm really in love with the way that this book is formatted with the typing as well as the start of the chapters. Everything about Tripping Arcadia is telling me that it's going to be the perfect autumnal thriller. Now on to our stack of investigation books. I really love investigative thrillers because I want to find answers and it's so enjoyable to see those pieces come into play and you can figure out what's going on along with the characters. I love that. I love trying to decide who you can trust and who you can't. There's something about a good police procedural I enjoy. I enjoy a good FBI story. I enjoy a good police procedural procedure role. What? But I also love individual investigations conducted by people who can't mind their own business or who feel that there's a mystery that needs to be solved and it's not going the right way. This stack here features all of the above. Let's get started. First off, we have a historical Korean thriller set in the 1700s called The Red Palace. We read this for our Patreon earlier this year and absolutely loved it. That spoilery filled vlog is live on the Patreon if you want to check it out. It was one of my most highly anticipated thrillers of the year and my goodness did it not disappoint. It was bloody and gory and poetic and plot driven with amazing characters. Everything that I could have asked for and more. In 1758 Joseon we are following a 17 year old girl named Haeyoun who is the illegitimate daughter of one of the city's most powerful leaders. She gets a coveted position as a palace nurse, but when women begin to get gruesomely murdered and her beloved teacher is pinned down for the crime, she starts an investigation with one of the city's detectives to prove her innocence. This is a nice little serial killer story. We love serial killer books in this house. It balances all of these themes so well. The serial killer, the girl who's struggling with her familial inheritance or lack thereof, her position in society, this girl who's coming to her own, who's trying to learn the politics of this palace that is very, very dangerous and cutthroat. And she can be thrown out on the street at any time, but she's also struggling to survive, fighting for her literal life. And she's got this blooming will they won't they romance with the police inspector. It's really really good. Again if you like a good creepy house situation you're gonna love this. If you love two people teaming up to investigate a crime together and trying to sort through their odds with one another this is gonna be the book for you. These two people have very different stations in society. One is of an elevated status and the other is not and the class differences between them really get in the way of the romance and the friendship rather that's blooming between the two of them. That's another thing that I really love seeing explored in my literature and the gore horror within this book is great but all of the elements are balanced so well so I think that if you're a person who isn't really big into horror this is still going to be a book that you'll be able to read and enjoy. Next up we have an indigenous bleh. Next up we have an indigenous mystery thriller titled Winter Accounts. I read this last year when it came out or maybe it was the year before that and holy molecules Batman this book blew me away. It's actually the first in a series and I need to look up and see if the second book is out yet because I have been waiting for it. We are following a troubled character named Virgil Wounded Horse who is a local indigenous enforcer living on a reservation, Rosebud, South Dakota. He is known for not believing in many of the more spiritual traditions of his people. Essentially, he only believes in what he can see and he feels very disconnected from his indigenous heritage. But he cares a lot about his community and people within his community will hire him to met out community justice when the police fail to do so. 
and when drugs begin getting trafficked into his reservation, he sets out to investigate who is doing the crime and to put them behind bars. This is another one of those stories that is incredibly balanced. The investigation component is really well balanced. You have him teaming up with his ex-girlfriend. They obviously have a very tumultuous relationship and that is really well done, especially the part where he's struggling with his spirituality. He's also taking care of a teenager that is his nephew and they have a really fraught relationship. His nephew is struggling with a lot of grief. There's so many elements at play within this book and the writing is very straightforward. If you're someone who doesn't like a lot of lyricism in their thrillers, this is definitely going to be one that you're gonna wanna pick up. It is perfect for November, which is Indigenous Heritage Month and I think you all should add it to your TBRs, especially for this month if you can squeeze it in or simply whenever you can. Remember that it's super important to be seeking out indigenous reads all year and not just in November. And finally, we have two books for the investigative portion of this video. And these are two books that I recommend quite a lot. Akasha's hair is on my eyelash. Akasha is the gift that keeps on giving. Love you. The first book is The Way of All Flesh by husband-wife duo Ambrose Perry. Now, this series is set in the 1800s of Edinburgh. In The Way of All Flesh, we are following a creative cast of characters, some inspired by real life. First off, we have Dr. Simpson, who is credited for having discovered chloroform. We're following Will Raven, his troubled apprentice that he takes on, as well as Sarah, his highly intelligent housemaid who is aspiring within the medical field, but constantly held back not only by her gender, but also her, her station in society. And the three of them begin a very dangerous investigation into gruesome murders of women within the city of Edinburgh. Now, this is a fantastic book for those of you who are really into those like Jack the Ripper-esque vibes. One of those books that makes you feel utterly transported into the story itself. It is rainy and dark and gloomy, horse-drawn carriages, cobblestones, all of that. Definitely my favorite Dark Academia series. I love the medical horror within it. I love the character work and the narrator is one of my absolute favorites. This type of narration that was really popular within this period, which is a very wise but sarcastic narrator who is not afraid to kind of give their opinion on the characters, if that makes sense. This is one of my first books that I ever tabbed and back when I would like leave my tab super far out of the book, but it is also really, really funny. He hauled himself aboard the carriage and attempted to squeeze in beside the dog, which seemed reluctant to surrender any part of his position on the seat to the newcomer. That's literally Akasha. It's an incredible book, impeccably written, and all of the elements are fantastic. You've got, again, one of those romances where the two people are divided by class, and also differences in personality. I loved watching these characters try to work together, as well as getting to know them on an individual basis, and it made me so excited to continue on with the series. Now, it actually took me a couple years before getting around to the sequel, which is The Art of Dying. Again, continuing with these absolute beautiful covers. This book takes a different turn and we are following a female serial killer. Especially for this time frame, I found it very interesting that Ambrose Perry decided to write a female serial killer and you are getting her perspective throughout the book and figuring out her motivations. She is a dark, twisted son of a gun and she is like writing letters to the reader. So there's a nice little, what is it called? Um, it starts with an E. I was gonna say esoteric, but that's not it. Oh my god, what is it called? Epistolary component of the book. There it is. I know words. The relationships between the characters change drastically in this book in a way that I don't want to give up. So if you are a fan of thriller, mystery, gothic horror series where the characters grow, change, and evolve, definitely continue on with this book. I highly recommend reading the first book because it helps establish the dynamics, but if for some reason you can only get your hands on this one, it does an amazing job of recapping what went down in the way of all flesh, and you should be able to follow along. Now on to our paranormal portion of the video. I am so excited because I absolutely love paranormal horror and thrillers and this stack is pretty diverse. Getting started, I'm going to recommend Shades of Rust and Ruin by A.G. Howard. I read this 
uh, like a couple months ago for my reading red horror books vlog which is going to be linked down below i read this tiffany d jackson's weight of blood as well as after dark with roxy clark and so if you want my non-spoilery thoughts on all three of those books definitely check out that video. One of my favorite videos that I have done this year. In my opinion, it's quite slept on. Considering that we have just passed over Halloween and many of us miss it deeply and dearly, this is going to be a great book for continuing on with the season because it is set on Halloween. We are following a girl named Nyx who is struggling with survivor's guilt because her sister died and she did not but also she is cursed. Her family continues to die every single year on Halloween, leaving her alone with her remaining uncle, who is an absolute sweetheart. But when he vanishes within a paranormal realm right around Halloween, she and her best friend, who she may or may not be in love with, have to go into this paranormal world in order to rescue him from the Goblin King's maze before the clock strikes midnight. This book has a lot going on. You've got goblins, you've got a paranormal world, and you have technology. She has an emotional support animal that is a robot that she created. And so there's a lot of tech, like steampunk vibes in here, but it's a really good combination of artistry as well. The writing is lush and so vivid. I mean, the world is extravagant. You really feel transported and into this kind of weird dreamlike haze. I absolutely loved it. This is a really good book to read for the vibes. It's also an incredibly fast paced read. Nyx kind of keeps up her sister's love of robotics, but her true love is sketching. The world that her uncle is pulled into is actually a world that she created from her sketches. So it's a sketches come to life situation. I absolutely adored it. Then we have Alex North's The Whisper Man. This would be my second book from Alex North. I have not read it and I have to confess that I don't know for sure if it's paranormal or not. I've heard that it is and I've also heard that it isn't, but because this is a little thriller, I don't want to get spoiled. And I think Alex North is kind of known for keeping you on the fence as to what type of thriller he's actually writing. This is also a book that doubles as a police procedural, which we love to see. After the sudden death of his wife, Tom Kennedy moves to a small creepy little town with his son, Jake. This town has a dark reputation because 25 years ago, a serial killer abducted and murdered five people. This killer was known as the Whisper Man and all of the victims supposedly reported hearing whispering at their window. And when another boy is abducted and goes missing, two detectives launch an investigation and we are following them as well. But then Jake, the young son of our protagonist, starts hearing whispering outside his window. Again, I have not read this book, but it sounds good. It sounds creepy. I love a serial killer book and any kind of unsolved mystery, disappearance, abduction always gives fall vibes to me. It definitely gives autumn. I think for the last two years, I've debated picking up this book specifically right around this time. Now, finally, we have a middle grade horror that I absolutely adored and that is Hide and Seeker. I believe that this was a debut and it did not disappoint. This is a phenomenal paranormal horror where we are following a little boy that is haunted by his best friend's disappearance after a game of hide and seek. I mean, I don't know if all of you played hide and seek as a kid, but I certainly did. And we have to admit, it's a creepy ass game. And then one day the boy reappears, except he's different. It involves a group of kids having to be taken into this dark, underground world and get out before being trapped forever. I'm not gonna lie, this book was creepy. It has different types of horror and it's really well written. A fast paced read and one that is going to leave you guessing at times, but ultimately quite satisfied by the end. Now for our final stack, which is the suspense books. Now suspense thriller and horror books is another one of my absolute favorite genres. This genre kind of goes hand in hand with gothic thriller horror books. Again, this is the genre that I tend to give books five out of five stars in pretty generously. Now I'm going to recommend a book that I do want to reread because I read it in 2017, 2018, and it is a book that I very badly want to reanalyze. Now that book is none other than All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker. This book involves a young teenage girl who is sexually assaulted at a party in the woods. 
and when she is in the hospital in a coma from her injuries, she is given an experimental medical drug that erases the memory of the trauma. But in the days to come, she struggles with the emotional memory of what happened. We are also following the therapist that she is teamed up with to discuss how she is healing. However, the predator is still on the loose and this psychiatrist will stop at nothing to bring them to justice. Now, I have to say that this book requires massive content warnings for rape and sexual violence. It is one that looks very deeply at therapy and what it means to have emotional memories stored within the body. I very much enjoyed the writing and this was a book that hit me quite hard when I read it. So if you're a fan of emotional thrillers, especially those with an investigative component and ones that are deeply psychological, you're gonna wanna read this. I like books that have psychologists, psychiatrists in them, and I love a good psychological suspense story. The twist at the end of this book, <laughs> the twist at the end of this book, I mean, this is a book where there was no way I could see the twist coming. And if you're one of those people who likes to really be challenged by a twist, all is not forgotten is gonna be a book that you don't want to forget to read. This is a book that I simply have so many deeply mixed feelings on and I would love y'all's input on it if you have read it and that is none other than Temper by Lane Fargo. Y'all may know Lane Fargo as the incredible author behind, uh, what was it? Uh, Never, They Never Learn, an incredible serial killer dark academia book that I enjoyed the pants off of. But in Temper, we are following a gorgeous actress who was cast in a play with the infamous Malcolm Mercer, who is a director that is well known for pushing actors deeply beyond their limits. Malcolm Mercer has left a trail of psychologically damaged actors in his wake, but she is determined to survive him. We are also following Joanna, who has co-founded the theater and has motivations of her own. She sees Kira, our protagonist, as a threat to her intense relationship with Malcolm, one that is full of manipulation and dependency. But as opening night draws near, these three characters find themselves trapped within a web of manipulation, darkness, and bone-chilling suspense. Now, this book is for people that really, really like a good suspense story because it is slow. It is very, very psychological, and it is like 300 pages of power struggle. So if you need things to happen more than conversation, this book is gonna be too slow for you. But if you enjoy a good slow book, definitely check this one out. So this is gonna be for people who love a deep, deep, deep psychological dive into all of the characters and their dynamics, especially those of you who are attracted to books about manipulative relationships and working through them. This is definitely going to be the book for you. The ending of this book is pretty phenomenal. It is something that I did see coming, but it was set up so well that I was excited to watch it play out regardless. And still, there were elements of surprise within it. These characters are morally gray, they are complex, they are challenging, they are absolutely infuriating, and I think that this is the type of book where you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. So let's discuss in the comment section down below if you've read it. I'm gonna go fast for these last three because as I'm sure you've noticed, the light is waning and I deeply apologize for that. It is not late in the day, but the clouds have decided to do their own thing. Oh wait, no, we only have two more. So the second to last book is The Turnout by Megan Abbott. This is another theater thriller where we are following two siblings, two sisters that own a ballet company. They have vastly different ballet styles as teachers and they are putting on an upcoming performance of The Nutcracker. But when a murder occurs at their studio, they are forced to cover it up and these two sisters' dynamics and lives are challenged in ways that they never expected. Again, a really, really slow, suspenseful, gothic-esque story from an author who knows how to write a good psychological tale. The setting is vivid and real and if you like theater thrillers, if you like thrillers about complex family dynamics and toxic ones at that, secrets that refuse to stay buried, this is going to be the book 
that you are going to want to read. Now, these girls are deeply haunted by their relationship with their mother who is no longer on planet Earth. Their mother was glamorous, but dark and twisted. And it's just a look at super fucked up families. Content warning for sexual violence within this book. Be sure to look up content warnings for all of these books just to keep yourself safe and to know what you're getting into. And the final book is one that I was not expecting to love as much as I did, which is A History of Wild Places. This book is the ultimate autumnal thriller. It is set in the woods and you feel like you are dying along with the leaves while reading this book. I loved the writing. Gorgeous, poetic, beautiful scene setting, and it's a cult. The book starts out with us following a man named Travis Wren who has this paranormal ability to identify missing persons, and he tracks a missing woman to a cult in the woods called Pastoral, but then disappears himself. We then follow a character who discovers Travis's abandoned truck and goes on a mission to find out what happened to this man and the secrets behind this town. Pastoral is an amazingly reclusive community where no one is allowed to leave because there is a sickness, an illness within the trees that will infect and kill you if you come into contact with it. Ooh. If you love a claustrophobic setting, if you love gorgeous, suspenseful writing, if you love a book that's going to keep you guessing and guessing and guessing, this is definitely going to be the one for you. It is also genre bending. You've got paranormal components, you've got an investigative components, and you have psychological components. It is full of family secrets, complex relationships between between members of the town as well as with the cult leader himself. What more could you want? <sighs> All right, friends, those are my autumnal thriller recommendations. Do y'all have any autumnal thriller recommendations? Let me know in the comment section down below and feel free to give recs for books that I missed. As always, my social media links are in the description box down below as well as the link to my Patreon if you are interested in any Patreon exclusive content for me. Stay safe, be good to yourselves, be good to others, and I hope to see you in my next video.